Hey everybody, welcome back to another week briefing. We do this every Wednesday at one o'clock and we just happen to be right out front of the Sheriff's Office, downtown Flint. You may have seen these two vehicles traveling somewhere in Genesee County for the last 37 years. It's the Sheriff Paramedic Division that work in conjunction and complement our private EMS all around Genesee County. But we're really gonna highlight MMR, uh, mobile medical rescue and all the rigs that you see that have MMR. There's some uh, unbelievable work that uh, took place between these two EMTs and Deputy Lakey from the Sheriff's Office. Then we'll share another incredible feel good story that involves that paramedic deputy, Elijah Back. And then I'm gonna kind of bring in a special guest to wrap it all up. So just listen to what happened on July 13, 2021. This right here is EMT Lily Remington. Her partner, Gavin Rose, work as basic EMTs for MMR. And there's a, a number of companies that work in Genesee County. And for those that are wondering the difference of, of where an EMT is, is we all start out as EMTs. Anybody who wears a paramedic patch, we're EMTs. And we often say that, that great paramedics are great EMTs first. So the fact that you have two basic EMTs, emergency medical technicians that are being highlighted in this case is outstanding. And I hope both of you have a path to go even farther in the medical world. Deputy Lakey has been with us and has been recognized for countless acts of heroism throughout her career. She's a police officer and a licensed paramedic. She's been recognized not only for her work as a police officer, but also as a paramedic. And on this day at around 1.26 a.m. on the 6,000 block of North Saginaw Street in Genesee Township, this crew was dispatched to a mentally ill individual that had a prior criminal history. It was hallucinating. And the officers from Genesee Township had been dispatched to that call multiple times throughout the day, and he was never there. But this time when they got there, he was laying in the grass. He had self-inflicted deep wounds to his wrists in order to kill himself and kept saying, they're after me, they're gonna kill me, they're gonna kill me. Clearly somebody he was emotionally disturbed. Deputy Lakey gets assigned to the call. The individual, 37 years old, is acting appropriately, is answering questions, knows day, place, and time. The EMT start bandaging up the wounds. Everything is fine. They get in the back of the rig. Deputy Lakey, because of the trauma, starts an IV on the way to the hospital. EMT Remington, not often is it, uh, we have to recognize somebody who's driving a car behind him, but is driving the paramedic car on the way to the hospital while EMT Rose was the driver of the rig. And shortly before they get to the hospital, the patient turns to the left, turns to the right, jumps out of the cot, releases, and attacks Deputy Lakey. Full on attack. Rose slams on the brakes, puts it in park, jumps around, and as he sees the struggle in the back, and this is after Deputy Lakey gets headbutted and continues to fight, continues to try to restrain, using everything she's got to contain the situation one-on-one -on -one in the back with somebody who's already displayed a high level of mental illness. Rose jumps out, Remington puts the car in park, she jumps in, calls for help, and the three of them contain the entire scene in the back of the rig. Now, anybody that you see in a sheriff paramedic or any police officer can tell you that we've all been in the back of the rig where we've lost control of a scene and we've got to get it back because the patients or even family, there's a lot of emotion there. But they were able to contain this patient, put him back on the cot, restrain him. After the EMTs, including Remington, jumped on top of him to do the restraint needed in order for Lakey to handcuff the patient. But this is probably the one thing that I want to really point out, is this backup is coming. And, and is this just, you probably hear sirens going because Rose was able to restrain, Remington called for help on her EMS channel. Soon as it was contained, Deputy Lakey said, I'm good. Even being offered help in the back of the rig, he said, I got this. When people talk about public service, police, fire, and EMS, that shows the level of professionalism and restraint that you can go from a near deadly force situation, 
from a medical perspective back down to I got it controlled in a second. And, and that's where you take somebody who's not in law enforcement, but in EMS in a second can be thrown into a life and death situation. So I want the world to see that EMT, Remington and Rose and paramedic police officer, Emily Lakey, they on the 13th of July showed why this profession, EMS and fire should be recognized every day as heroes for the work that they do at 1.26 in the morning when probably you and I were asleep. And I'd also like to recognize Jason and Steve for coming out, all those that uh, work for MMR, all those that are working right now, we appreciate you every day that you answer these calls and you hear an ambulance and you think, ah, slows down traffic, your day's going. Don't forget where they're going or maybe who they have in the back of the rig. When you see a sheriff car, make sure you realize that, hey, they're going to something that could be devastating and catastrophic for someone else. So give some grace for them. But I want to recognize these two EMTs with a certificate. This is the highest recognition we can give as the sheriff's office and their general orders and it's a certificate of professional excellence. In addition to this, each one are getting our commemorative coins that police officers give and a lot of folks do. It started in the military. Just a simple sign of thank you for protecting our own and for standing up with courage. Congratulations. wonder what is in it for Deputy Lakey. Well, we have a big old awards bank we do the first Thursday of November, and I promise you that you're going to be recognized for valor in the back of that rig. So congratulations, Deputy Lakey. If that's not enough, we got another amazing story. This is paramedic deputy Elijah Back. And standing next to him is his partner, Nick Willette. And on the 20th of September, 2020, Elijah Back gets dispatched to a call, a call of a medical. Now, EMTs and paramedics, we get dispatched to traumatic situations which involve bodily trauma and medicals. In fact, most of our calls are medicals, and that's what he went on. The patient, when he was there, was lethargic, weak, lowered in the back of the ambulance, was having some, some, uh, some, some things happening that even, even the patient's family didn't even know. But let me just tell you this, in the back of the rig, it all changed when the patient went into cardiac arrest. And Elijah and the ambulance crew jumped into action. And for almost 13 minutes, they performed CPR with our Lucas compression device on the patient. Not only that, there's an algorithm that we follow when we treat patients that are in cardiac arrest. And while he was at a high level of stress following this algorithm, he continued to maintain composure because the patient in the back of Elijah Back's rig was Deputy Willette, his partner. See, in police work, we're all partners. And Elijah recognized that and was able to maintain calmness. And by the time he got to McLaren, he got pulses back. And I'm here to tell you that Nick Willette and his family were able to celebrate his return to work after he was able to be resuscitated by that deputy right there. So we have a, an award that I have the pleasure of giving you, and we've already recognized you, Elijah, and I know it's been great to see it firsthand, and I can't imagine the bond that you guys have because of that situation, but it was also turned in and nominated as a life-saving award in all of Michigan to the Michigan Sheriff Association. And I'll tell you this, the Michigan Sheriff Association, which represents 83 sheriffs in the state of Michigan, voted unanimous to give you the Michigan Sheriff Association life-saving award for his heroic actions on September 2, 2020, for the Genesee County Sheriff's Office and your patient and friend, Deputy Nick Willette. Congratulations. And I hope that Executive Director Matt Saxton is watching because uh, they couldn't do this award ceremony in person, so I had the privilege of, of, uh, of giving it to you. But um, Nick, I don't normally want to do this to you, man, but uh, do you have any words? You know, it's, it's one of those things where you never expect it to happen. And as being a police officer, you're involved in these calls and you go to them and you see it firsthand, but you never want it to happen to you as well. Uh, luckily enough, I had a great medic that was there, took care of me and brought me back so I could be with my family. And I'll be forever thankful to Elijah for doing that. So with that, well-deserved, sir. Thank you.
That's a beautiful story. So I don't care what day you have going on today. I hope that you're able to share the joy of these stories of, of being a hero, but also somebody who's in the back of the rig that's saving lives. And uh, I will tell you, your family is amazing. I hope they watch this video. Your brother and the support that your family gave you. Um, we just are so proud of you, man. And I can tell you, Nick is right back in the game, working full time, no deficit. And it causes us in EMS to keep doing it, no matter what. Keep doing it because you never know what the next call is going to be. So thank you very much. Thank you, Elijah. Keep doing good work. Thank you. We're almost done. I just want to remind everybody we only have 40, 40 more tickets left for the public for our human trafficking documentary that's been produced and directed by Nick Natton. You can look him up. As I said before, this is going to be a human trafficking documentary that will tell the story. So if you're a parent, you have a church, you're, you have a school, and you want to use this as a teaching tool because I promise you when you watch it, you're going to have conversations and that's the goal. We have about 1,500 people. Because of Premier Security and Day 4 Stick, all the tickets are paid for. All you need to do is call 810-237-7333, 810-237-7333. That's the Capitol Theater. That's the box office. And on August the 24th at 7 o'clock, we start. But on your way there, you're going to think you're at the Oscars. It's going to be done so well. And I can tell you, I have seen the footage, and it is compelling. And I promise you, in my opinion, it's going to be the best human trafficking documentary in the country. So it's a private screening. Get your tickets, because unfortunately, when they're gone, they're gone. Finally, I'm going to bring up Robert Moore. Robert Moore is a uh, global news correspondent for ITV. He's worked with, uh, in Washington, and if you look at his bio, he's, he's been in London and Brussels and in the Middle East. And... And uh, he came here last year to do a couple stories. And the first story was what Genesee County did that was seen around the world. And uh, he's from the UK and he wanted to make a comparison, but he came back to do another story. And uh, we did that story. I'm not even sure if that's out yet, so I won't dip my hand. Maybe you can talk about it. But he's here today because he wants to get a better view of what's happening here at the Sheriff's Office. Now this gentleman has been around the world and I just asked him to join me on the Wednesday briefing at one to kind of share why he's here and why this place is so special. And I hope everybody who's part of this, from media to everybody I just named, to everybody in Genesee County, why this is so important to be recognized by people who don't live here, who are not from here. There's gotta be something special here. So if you would close us out, I may have a couple follow-up questions, but please welcome Robert Moore from ITV. Yeah. Thank you guys and uh, well done uh, Officer Lakey and, and your EMTs and uh, paramedics who do such a remarkable job. I've had a glimpse of that just this week as well and uh, I'm in awe of, of, of the medical professionals and law enforcement professionals who have been hosting here uh, this week. My name is Robert Moore. I'm a foreign correspondent based in the United States for a British TV network, ITV News. That's Britain's main commercial uh, television station. So normally I'm the other side, uh, behind the camera, uh, uh, and at that side of things for the press conference. But here I'm a, I'm a guest of, of Sheriff Swanson and his officers. Um, and I suppose it begs the question of why would a British TV reporter come to, to Genesee County? And for me, uh, it feels like I've rather adopted uh, this county and its law enforcement community, or perhaps it's fair to say they've adopted me. And the reason I keep coming back here is it seems to me that this is a microcosm of America. It's got so many of the issues and challenges. It's got the economic challenges of, of the American heartland. It's also got diversity at the very heart of its community. And I first came here in the aftermath of the BLM protests and saw the remarkable call for unity that the sheriff delivered that day. But I've come back after the January the 6th political turmoil to see how that also is impacting a community in the American heartland. And I've reported all over the world, you know, as, as, uh, as Sheriff Swanson said, I've reported with law enforcement communities in, at Scotland Yard, most obviously in Britain, but also in Russia, in the Middle East and Africa. And I keep on coming back to the United States because I'm inspired by the work uh, of law enforcement here, but also the challenges they face. And the challenges they face are exactly the same in communities all over the world. And, you know, it's often said in Britain that what happens here always comes across the Atlantic. So the challenges that you and your officers face, whether it's dealing with you know, racial turmoil or addiction, the addic addiction epidemic, all of those cross the Atlantic and face British police officers as well. So there is an extraordinary appetite in Britain, in Europe and around the world to see what, what is happening on the front line 
of American policing because it is a glimpse of what's coming down the road for us as well. Even it's true to say that my daughter has been hosted by you this week, so she gets some work experience here in Genesee County. So, look, on behalf of myself, but also my network, ITV News, thank you for seeing the press not as the enemy, but as a partner. That's right. Because it's so important amid the, the kind of incendiary political rhetoric that is, uh, that is heard in America to understand that, you know, the press, the media, and law enforcement ultimately are partners. We all want to highlight crime. We all want accountability and transparency. Um, but we are ultimately partners in trying to make America a better and a safer place. And, and Chris, thank you very much for hosting me, my daughter, uh, and, and from Britain. You know, I'm going to keep taking British viewers back to Genesee County yeah. because it's a, it's a glimpse of what heroes like Officer Lakey do every yeah. day. It's a glimpse of kind of emergency medicine on the That's road, right. trying to save people's lives. It's a glimpse into the challenges faced in county jails, which are, you know, those same issues of overcrowding are true in Britain too. Mm. Um, so I want the British viewers to see a little bit of America through your eyes and through Genesee County. But thank you to all the officers here uh, for hosting us. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thanks. much, Robert. Thanks. I appreciate thank it very so much. much. Oh, you just left me hanging here. There we go. There we That's go. what we do here. Ah, thanks so much. I was about to go give him the hug. You know, I, I, I wanted to end on that, Robert, because, you know, sometimes you're in the middle of it. You wonder what other folks think. And I just want anybody who has any connection with Genesee County, Michigan, United States, just feel so inspired that we are being seen as a beacon of hope. We are being seen as a solution to an issue. We're certainly not perfect, but we are on the right track. And when I get validated that what the sheriff's office, the command staff, with the medics, the jail, Ignite, what we're doing with ghosts, what we're doing with all these things, so many parts in that partnership with the media to tell the story. We could not reach you if we didn't have our media friends and partners. And for that, I'm so thankful. I know we've taken a little bit more time than we normally used to. I'm just asking you to thank a public servant today. It doesn't matter what field they're in. They don't even have to be in police, fire, any mass, but go give them a big old hug, a high five, buy them a big gulp and just say thank you. And to you, sir, safe travels back to home. And thank you for always recognizing what we're doing. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.